Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Andrew and welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry. In the last episode we finished up chapter 3 and we've also read the uh, tips for chapter 3 as well. And uh, things are starting to get pretty interesting. We found out about the murder of the dam. So I think we're going to go further into that now that we've take, taken the tabloids home. So right, let us continue and uh, see what happens. So I've already been here. Let us continue with chapter 4. The function of this school as an education facility is very questionable. Our PE class is exceptionally disorganized. The only things we do together are the warm-ups at the start. The teacher isn't even there after that. All we do is play together. So are we not gonna... Oh, oh dear. Hello! Um, so are we not gonna talk more about the murders? Okay. No helping it. Everyone's a different age or gender. The only rule was that we have to stay on school grounds while exercising. All the little kids were gallivating about. Well, they certainly are being active. They might be getting plenty of exercise, but... The Board of Education probably completely forgot about this school. <laughs> uh... Sorry to keep you waiting. We're all together now. What shall we do today for PE? Alright, we have all of our members gathered now. Now then, class representative, what shall we do for PE today? What shall we do? Mia and Harumph then crossed their arms hotly, surveying the area. Explosive power and endurance. There are no friends in the world of sports. Everyone is a rival. The only thing you can trust in is your own body. What the heck do you mean by that? You really read too much manga. I quipped without missing a beat. And so we'll be taking a lesson from history. The tried and true king of all outdoor melee events. Let's play tag! It was quite the adorable choice to make after playing it up so much. Just what I was hoping for. That Dunderhead Keiichi-san shall be the first one to be it. Why me? Based on what? I won't be beaten. I'll try my best too. You can't beat me. Why are you guys all in so into it? Because I'm a guy. Obviously. The third rule of our society. You must partake in the game enjoying it without question. Then this counts as a club activity? Everyone smirked at each other. They all seemed pretty confident. I'm a man. Physically I should be able to keep up with any girls my own age. Regardless, Mion and Satoko looked as looked like they were aiming for victory, and Rena was looking at me as if pitting my disadvantage. Fine. Tag, I'm in! I'm in! My yell echoed across the school grounds. These were the rules. Anyone who was able to evade being tagged before the bell was a winner. But we didn't switch who was it. The ones who were tagged by it also became it. So the number of people who were it could, incre could increase exponentially. Ooh, I see. The end game would become a hellish siege. That sounds pretty fun, actually. They call the version we're playing here zombie tag, you see. I see. Anyone infected by a zombie turns into a zombie. Why do you make it sound so scary, I wonder? I wonder. As soon as I catch Ren, I'm gonna tear out her entrails while she's still alive. D don't don't say something you might regret later on, KG. C gross, KG couldn't. That's gross. Rika-chan placed her head on Rena's head as she panicked. Don't worry. Before KG gobbles you down, I'll eat you up gently. <laughs> what? Rika, that isn't comforting at all. Both Mion and I nodded deeply. So the first it. How do you decide who's the first, who's the zombie? With rock, paper, scissors? Didn't we establish that we were it? Well, it is class time after all. Let's decide by answering questions. I'll ask the question and the one who isn't able to answer is the zombie. I have no idea which grade level they're coming from. Or are we the smartest of the group? So obviously we can't lose. What does the Japanese word Roku mean? Huh? I was bewildered by the sudden question. Mion repeated it. So you need to answer. What's Roku in English? Um, it, it's six. How about Kutu, Kutushita? 
sucks. What's the third last letter in the alphabet? It's X. What does Seibetsu mean? Of course I know what that is. This is Satoko cut herself off before finishing the answer. I see. It's quite a lewd question. Oh! You're an adult, aren't you? Of course you know what it is, right? I certainly do. Of course I know. Then go ahead and say it. That, you know. That. What does that mean exactly? Oh, Satoko looks like she's in trouble. How cute. Don't take her home, it's a crime. If I didn't nip if I didn't nip it in the bud, she really might have tried to take her home. Neon's pursuit was relentless, making Satoko stammer. Now then, go ahead and say it nice and loudly. What does that mean? I do know, I do know. <laughs> really, Neon? That means a person thing, idea, action, or event, which has been previously indicated in context. Really? Huh? Ah, uh, ah! Uh. Oh my god, really? Is that... was that Neon's play? All of us were a bit surprised by Rika-chan's unexpected answer. I see. Well, it certainly is what that means. That could have been awkward. I wonder what I would have done in Satoko's position. I'd probably get ticked off and just blurt out, you know what, at the top of my lungs. I wouldn't want you as my enemy, Neon Sanazaki. Thank goodness you were born a girl. If you were a boy, you'd probably be a perverted asshole. It... it appears I have no choice. Unfortunately, I, Satoko Hujo, shall assume the role of the zombie. I shall lead everyone! Seems like she's raring to go, oh dear. All I must do is count to a hundred, correct? Some jerk skip numbers while counting to 100, so you can start chasing after you solve this problem. What? Whoa, Katie can Give her a simple one, okay? She can still fake it and just, like, wait. One-fifth of a cake, one-sixth of a cake, and one-seventh of a cake are all on a plate. Oh no! But there are no common denominators! Satoko grabbed the stick of the panic and began drawing a cake in fractions on the ground. If Satoko, who can eat one cake in 60 seconds, eat all of them, how many cakes are left on the plate? None, because she eats all of them. Just as I finished giving the word problem, Neon shouted. Ready, go! On Neon's signal, everyone but Satoko scattered. <laughs> Keiichi kun, that wasn't the problem at all, was it? Satoko had already lost the moment she started working it out. She's eating it all, so of course there's nothing left on the plate. I fucking knew. <laughs> Everyone dashed off in the direction they thought was best. Knowing the lay of the land, they probably headed right to the best spots. It was obvious I was at a disadvantage. At a time like this, it would have been more effective to go along with those trained in survival skills. Like Neon, for example. The fact that I didn't realize it at the start of the game probably hurt my chances. Glancing back over the school grounds, I saw Satoko just rising up the start. She was really, really mad. <laughs> she got tripped on such a dumb question. I feel kind of bad for her. I stood, out, I stood at one of the corners of the school. I had clear sight lines in two directions and would probably have a good response time if any zombies started closing in. For the time being, I caught my breath and focused on what I was trained to think during club activities yesterday. Now think on me, Keiichi Mebara. If I was it, what would I do? Increasing my numbers would be a shortcut to victory. Then going after the weakest player first is the obvious plan of attack. Meaning me. Now then, where could Keiichi san possibly be? I shan't let you escape. Uh, but of course, we called it. What would be the best meta to track me down? Footprints of smell. May or maybe some kind of trail. If I could craftily hide my tracks, then there would be no trail for Satoko to follow. This is not... Uh, okay. But I was no detective. Would I even be able to do that kind of thing in an amateur game like this? Tamita Okamura, have you seen Keiichi-san recently? What the heck? Do zombies hurt their prey by asking nicely where they went? 
Tomita-kun and Okamura-kun pointed to the location where I was hiding. After confirming she was headed in, headed in this direction, I abandoned my position. It wasn't easy to hide myself with all those little kids running around as they pleased. It was becoming even more obvious that I was at a disadvantage from not being familiar with these surroundings. If that's how it was going to be, then to confront this intelligence gathering zombie I just counter it with a similar vein. I approached some girls playing with a ball. I'm sorry, but could you relay this message? Tell Satoko Hojo that her parents are at the gate, please. Oh, okay, we're playing dirty now. Message, message! <laughs> okay, okay. I stopped the girls as they turned to run off. Wait, don't go yet! Also, take this one to Mio and Sonazaki. Tell her the teacher is calling her to the gate. <laughs> I'm quite the schemer if I do say so myself. If things went well, then Satoko and Mion would run into each other at the gate. It would put me at a disadvantage if more people were it, but this was Mion we were talking about. She'd figure out a way to escape, but that was just fine, as long as it brought me more time. <laughs> Dance for me, Mion and Satoko, in the palm of my hand. We're a great mastermind, aren't we? Having, a fill, having my fill of playing the con man, I looked for a place to hide. If you think about it logically, I'd only brought myself a scant amount of time. And he might even come back to bite me. Once it became apparent I started spreading false information through messages, I could end up being the recipient of one of those messages. So Toko would probably ask the messengers to help her look for me. That would mean there would be more zombies than participants in the game. The virus that is brought about by my mischief could cause an epidemic. All my classmates would transform into zombies and would only be searching for me. This tactic. This tactic might backfire horribly. While trembling at the thought of my impending dawn of the dead, I began searching for a safe house. I found a shed by the incinerator behind the school. Why is there... Why is there an incinerator in a school? I, I've seen this in like Yandere Simulator as well. Why is there incinerators at a school? I'm really curious. After climbing up to the roof, I held my breath. Especially with like little kids, that doesn't really make sense, that's dangerous. It wasn't a bad place to hold out. Not only did I have a good line of sight, but if necessary, I could jump off in three different directions to escape. It was getting rowdy down there. The lower grades were running around below the shed. mebara san isn't around, is he over there? No. Where's Keiji-san, I wonder? His dad is at the front gate. <laughs> really? That was definitely a lie. The word gate, the same one I'd use, gave a hint of revenge. So Mion was behind this. I was still keeping one step ahead of the game. I felt bad for my underclassmen, but they'd have to search until the school bell. Hey, hey, do you know where Keiji-san is at? His mom suddenly got really sick. A message from Ebara-san. They said he house caught fire and needs to come to the gate. A jumbo jet fell on top of the Ebara resident. The police have come to question him. Anything goes now. They say he enjoys peeping into bathrooms. Huh? Is it true that he's going around every night stealing panties? What are they talking about? I heard he wears panties on his head and smells them and stuff. No way would I do that? I heard that class representative Mion was a victim too. What? Ah, this was your doing, Mion? Calm down, Keiichi Mebara. This is Mion's battle tactic to flush me out. Just hold on. If my underclassmen thought about it logically, they would know it's all nonsense. But small kids don't think about things logically. To them, all those things were true. So they all chuck chuckled together while looking for me. <laughs> I win, Mion. It's my victory. <laughs> wiping, unrelen wiping unrelenting tears away, I felt intoxicated by my own victory. Did you hear? I hear that the new transfer student Meobara-san is a really perverted person. Yeah. The cost of beating Neon had too high a price. Ah! Oh! Someone passed below. That's... Rena and Rika-chan. Uh -huh. Rika-chan, you're still okay? I'm getting by somehow. Uh -huh. It seems Mi-chan is it as well. Neon? It couldn't be. She'd become it because of my little strategy? This confirmed that Mion was behind this relen relentless message war. Then, this wasn't good. We finally got away from Mi-chan, but Satoko-chan, she's... Satoko is searching around the pipes, so we should be safe here for a while. Upon hearing that, I breathed a sigh of relief. 
While Rena was slumped on the ground breathing heavily, Rika-chan had started creeping up to her. Rika-chan doesn't normally make noise when she walks, but it's strange. It couldn't be. Whoa! Rika-chan! What is it? What is it? Huh? Don't worry. I'd never seen Rika-chan smile so creepily before. Why are you coming closer? Why? Rika-chan isn't a zombie, is she? Don't be scared. I'll be sure to eat you gently. No way! Rika-chan, no! Eek! Oh. Reno was pressed against the wall and Rika-chan lurched forward with both arms out, just like a zombie. Rena quaked with her back pushed up against the wall. It was quite a surreal scene of honor. Of, of honor? Of horror. Like one of those zombie breakout videos you'd see. Are we gonna like jump down and save Rena? At that moment, Rena's eyes went mine. Keiichi kun, save me! Zombie Rika chan turned 180 degrees, exorcist style, and glared at me. Wait, weren't we on the roof? I thought we were gonna like drop down in between them and like make our entrance. Oh wait, ho hold on, who's who? Zombie Rika, oh, it was Rika, I thought it was her. Found him, I see Kei-chan. Mion popped out from behind the cinder block wall as around, around the garbage dump, it's also seeing where I was. Oh, wait, we're still on the roof. My position was only advantageous was when there, were, there was one zombie, being surrounded was not as good. You said you located Keiichi-san? I could tell that Satoko was rushing my way. It seemed that Rika-chan had let Rena escape, and now she was burying her fangs in my direction. Oh, no. Come on down, Keiichi-chan. The three zombies circled the shed, moaning... Uh, moaning? Sorry. Moaning curses. You guys are scary! Oh, for fuck's sake. Too scary! I wonder how Keiichi-san got taste. Keiichi-san! Keiichi, I want you to become one of us. Someone please save me! <laughs> I saw Ren apologizing to me from across the schoolyard. An apology. Sorry. Leaving me for dead? Rena! I leapt off the roof out of fear, slipping as I landed. Satoko and Rika jumped on top of me, and after straddling me, they tickled me all over my body. <laughs> stop! Oh wait, Sasuke. Stop! Stop! Duh! So this means Rena is still left. There isn't much time until the bell. Damn you, Rena! How dare you leave me for dead! The feelings of a zombie. I understood how vengeful ghosts with lingering regrets felt. It's sad. So sad. But KT is one of us now. It felt... It felt like I'd been bitten by a vampire and was now one of their thralls. It was a strange feeling being welcomed over to the side that had pursued them. Zombie tag is quite profound. Don't say. This is no time to postulate. We must capture Rena. The principal is walking down the hall. The bell will ring soon. To devour Rena, I, who had been turned into a demon of vengeance, needed to use any means necessary. Except I wasn't just a zombie. I was a master of the night. A vampire. Using the same trick that had tightened the noose around my own neck, I used my classmates to further my evil designs. I gathered up the lower grades from around the school rounds. Everyone, listen! Rena is in big trouble. All of you, please look for Rena. It's a bigger plan problem than a jumbo jet crashing into your family's house? Oh uh, yeah, it turned into that, hadn't it? Mion whistled nonchalantly, trying to avoid the blame. Yeah, it's not even in the same league as Jumbo Jets. What fell on Rena's house? It was a space colony, Jesus. A space colony? Yeah, it's a really big disaster. Everything in a hundred kilometer radius was obliterated. But that's only the prelude to this tragic tale. This is the beginning. The start of a war for independence by the propaganda bill propaganda palady of Zeon. What? <laughs> How do we come up with this? The lower grades were dumbfounded, their eyes like saucers at the grand turn of events. Well, what will happen? Will the Terran Federation lose? If things go on like this, they will. Only one person can defeat the, the Red Comet. That person is Ren or Yugu. The lower grade students all gulped. 
It seemed I'd made them fully understand that the fight for Earth was lost without Rena. Wouldn't the bell be... be rung by now? Just be serious. Now scatter, comrades! We must find Rena! My comrades in the Lord Grades let out an enthusiastic cheer and dashed off in various directions around the school grounds. Hmm? There was still one person who hadn't gone. But I thought even the Terran Federation's impulse wave diffusal cannon didn't work on the Comet Empire. You're close. It's the white variety of those comets. The reason it didn't work was because they didn't know the weak point. Of course, Rena knows their weak point all too well. Ryuku-san is amazing. Satisfied with that, he also rushed off to look for Rena. It does seem like there are some promising up and comers around amongst the youngsters. The little K-chan's abilities. This old man knows them better now. He didn't really feel like she was complimenting me, but whatever. Really though, how exceptional, Keiji-san. This looks quite promising. If we have this many, we can win. With this many, we will win. I was thinking that Keiji would have been a better nominee for the initial zombie. Rikachan words stung a bit, but I'd let it slide for now. Not even Rena would be able to escape the entire class. As a result of everyone's thorough searching, Rena was finally cornered in the back of the sports equipment shed. You're all scary! Keiji Kuntu! So scary! It probably was scary being chased around by the entire student body. All the lower grades closed in on Rena, saying she was the only one who could save the world. What are you all saying? I can't control a mech! Rena, how could you leave me for dead? Are you ready to pay for it? I'm sorry about that, Keiji Kun, but I didn't have a choice! Do not resist! Let yourself be devoured! Nom, 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 nom. Let's all be together. Now, Rena, say your prayers. <laughs> Rena had stumbled onto a mat, trembling with tears in her eyes. I closed in, associating this situation with a similar, peculiarly mortal one made my pulse quicken just a little bit. Sotoko and Rikachan were both wriggling their fingers. They probably wanted to tickle Rena. Rena, wanting no part of what she knew was about to happen, went stiff with fear. Keiji-kun, you wouldn't do mean things like everyone else, would you? Would you? Well, define mean things, I mean. I wonder... Oh, uh. She looks like she wants me to do mean things to her. <laughs> now then, are you ready? <laughs> What's with the random capitalization? Okay. So long as it's Keiji Kun. Alright, this got kinky really fast. The face she made as she resigned herself to her fate made my heart skip a bit. A beat. Ren, is there something you're not telling me? I believe that Keiji Kun won't do horrible things to me. Da oh, body won't move. That had to be some sort of anti zombie mantra. The second my sense of reason chimed in, the beast inside me died instantly. Is that how you call your raging boner? There was the bell. Game over. Yay! I did it! I did it! I survived! Yay! Yay! Star! Rena pranced around merrily as if a curse had been broken. <laughs> so daylight broke in the nick of time and the evil zombie army disintegrated into dust. And so the heroine survived. Well, that's how it goes in the movies anyway. Heroine? What are you postulating about? This is all because Keiji-san was darling about. Punishment is required. I was subdued by Satoko and Rikachan and once again sentenced to death by 100 tickles. Die! Oh, forgive me! No! Is there supposed to be a background? Am I missing a file or something? Then the award for surviving goes to Rena Ryugu and Mian Sunazaki. Yay! Wait, what? Huh? Michan wasn't a zombie? Only pre only pretended to be one. They say you need to deceive your allies before you can deceive the enemy, you know. Duh! Mion, you little... Oh my god, she... How do you compete with that? Yeah, yeah. Hurry up and change, alright? Don't be late for the next class. Like... Let go of me, Satoko! Rikachan! No! 
Having had my fill of being terrified to my very core by club activities, I solemnly swore I would have Neon crying for mercy next time. That was again pretty fun. I wonder how long it's gonna take before things get serious though. If only if only it wasn't for that scene in the beginning. This would fool everyone into thinking that this was just a random cutesy visual novel story. With like a side murder plot thing. Now I I wonder how uh, how long it's gonna take before like things get fucked up because we're like already in chapter 4 I don't know how many chapters there are uh, after arriving home I quickly made preparations to head out once again I had agreed to meet with Rena to dig Kyle and Sanders out of that mountain of treasure from before mom do we have work clothes? gloves? I need towels too aren't they in the shed out back? the towels are by the sink alright now I was ready looking at me my mom stared quizzi quizzically What's going on, KG? Where are you headed to, that, to in that getup? If they come to dump again illegally, he'll be buried completely and it'll be impossible to dig him out. And if that happens, Rena will undoubtedly go after the Colonel Sanders in front of the fried chicken place in town. A bit of ex excavating, so my classmate doesn't become a criminal. Well, don't be out too late. <laughs> she doesn't care. Mom returned to the kitchen with a puzzled expression still on her face. Cutting through the woods is a shortcut to the damn site. I, I, I just like that word, to the damn site. It's like, I ran into someone. Oh, it's Tomite. It was Tomite, son. Probably taking pictures of wild birds again with that precious camera of his. It couldn't be that all he took pictures of was handsome young men in the twilight. <laughs> hey, long time no see. K chicken, right? My dear regards. I expelled the rude imagery from my head and greeted him without inciting anything. By the way, was that girl an acquaintance of yours? He was probably talking about Rena. Guessing by the way time it takes on was shaken up. Is that me or still him? What was that all about? She was... Oh, what was that all about? She was walking around with an axe. And she was laughing with a huge smile across her face. She wanted to murder me. That was Rena without a doubt. It was probably because she could take it home today, so she couldn't hide her excitement. I hid myself because I thought it might be dangerous. Should I call the cops to be safe? Well, it certainly would be quite the spectacle for a girl of her age to be roaming around with an axe. Tomitik-san's reaction was the epitome, epitome of, lo of logical. It's fine, it's fine. Just leave her be. She's just wandering around looking for more victims. Tomitik-san was alarmed by my crass response. Well, it's probably hard for normal people to understand Rena. I'll just toss a bunch of BS out there. If you were to be killed out here, well, she'd probably be the one to do it. Try not to snoop too much around here. With a condescending smirk, I started off in the direction of the damn site where Rena was waiting. Before I got too far, Tamatek-san abruptly called out to me. Geichikun, is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Uh, I didn't mean that seriously. I did try to make it obvious, but... <laughs> I'll try my best to be careful. Leaving only those words behind, Tom and Take San turned around and left. I didn't really mean to call him an outsider. I wasn't really implying anything when I said that. It was only meant to be a joke, but it felt like I'd said something bad. gonna ask him more about like the murders and stuff because he seemed to know a bit about it. Keiichi kun I was waiting for you. Let's try our best today. I understood what Tomitake's son was trying to say. Somebody gallivating around while waving an axe around certainly would seem dangerous. You should cover the axe with something when you have it in public. It's not good to carry it around in the open like that. It seems that I lost it, so there is a wait. Really? How do you lose an axe? That thing's not really tiny, it's not a bunch of car keys. Thinking about it, there really was no need to try to keep up appearances. Everyone in Hinamisawa probably already knew about Rena's eccentricities. She's probably the only person who would carry an axe around Hinamisawa and not be considered suspicious. I, I bet she'll remember that when she turns into a murderer. 
Ah well, let's finish this today. If we bust through the last beam, we should be able to pull him out. I've got everything I need. Leave it to me. Okay. I took. Wait, what did she? What did she lose? Hold on. Just gonna get. Wait, what? It seems like you lost it. So there isn't there. There isn't a what? Huh? I, I don't I don't get it. I may be really dumb, but I don't get it. I took the axe from her and I made my way up the unstable slope. Just wait, Colonel Sanders. Katie can will save you, Star. All right, get back. I'll finish this in one go. A solid thwack rang throughout Namizawa as if the job was being done by a lumberjack. How is it? Think you can do it? If it looks too hard, you don't have to strain yourself. If I can break through this, then we'll be good. I have plenty of power today. I can do it. Yes. Because I'm a man. But this adversary was more formidable than I expected. First of all, I'd never used an axe before. During a school camping trip, I had wanted to split the wood, but I lost at rock, paper, scissors and wasn't able to do it. Because the spot where I was standing was so unstable, I soon became tired. I decided to take a break. Okay. Rena had already spread out a tarp and laid down some tea and sweets. I'm fine. I'm almost there. I'll make sure Rena can give Colonel Sanders a good night kiss tonight. That's a bit weird. Yeah, thanks. Giving Colonel Sanders a good night kiss. Oh. Come to think of it, Rena, you're a transfer student too, right? Where did you live before? I asked her nonchalantly while drinking tea. I thought she'd lived here all her life. Yeah, she said she didn't. Hmm? In Kanto. It wasn't as rural as rural as it as it is out here, but it was still out in the countryside. Why did you move here? To Hinamizawa, I mean. You know, it's this is pretty far out in the boonies. Why did you move here? Does it have to do with your dad's work? Changing the subject. Rena, I don't like what you're doing. Dad said he wanted to work out to a studio. He'd been saying for a while that someone deep in the mountains like this would be perfect. Studio? Is your father an artist or something? He paints scenery. Seems that twice a year he opens a gallery for the stuff he does. When he started, his works were displayed in in an industry plaza in Tokyo, but now they're exhibited in the Makuhari Mess. He's determined to have them displayed in the Waterfront International Exhibition Hall. That's amazing! Let me see them next time. I was too embarrassed to tell them that I didn't really know what kind of pictures my, pa my father painted. Well, eventually I would. I picked myself up while giving some vague answers. But you transferred in the middle of the semester, didn't you? Wasn't that a hassle? Not really. I was getting bored of the city anyway. I was saying to get answers from Rena, but I ended up being the one giving out all the an I was trying to get answers from Rena, but I ended up being the one giving out all the answers. Yeah, exactly. She kept changing the subject. With a bit of a wry smile on my face, I grabbed the handle of the axe and headed back to the work site. There's something about Ren I can't quite put my finger on. The air grew colder as the sun slowly set. The Higurashi began their song as if to tell me to stop and head home for the day. Just a bit more. Today, I would end it. When I first started, I chatted with Rena as I worked, but now I didn't have that luxury. Hoo-ya! You little... Damn it! I had swung the axe countless times today, just like... Jesus, what are you trying to fucking break? What could take this long if it was just a bee? I'd swung the axe countless times today, just like this. Contact. Shards of wood splintered. The assailants but Oh. The assailants butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes. I recall that passage from the tabloid. One hit with something like this would smash someone's head in. Dude, that's not the sort of things you should be thinking. Axes and pickaxes are not meant to be swung at people, ever. With one last swing, the beam cracked apart. The weight I put behind the axe not only split through the beam, but smashed the statue's shoulder as well. Ugh. The arm came off with a sickening sound. Oh, well, this is gonna help to our sanity. It clattered down noisily, stopping at my feet. Ugh. What's the matter? Are you hurt? Ugh, sorry. The figure's arm. I broke it off. Oh, that's all? I thought Gaethje couldn't hurt himself. 
I probably had a really guilty look on my face. Rena saw that without a hint of dismay as she smiled. We just need to take him back to tape it back on and put a coat over him. Nobody will even notice. I see. Let's pull him out then. Can you get that side? Okay. Seems they haven't been able to find one of the arms, you see. I laughed, dry I laughed dryly at how pathetic I was for considering the arm flopping down and rolling to my feet to be such a bad omen. Oh dear. Both Rena and Mion knew how sickening that incident was, so they pretended that they didn't know. I looked it up all by myself, and shamefully enough, I was scared. You're pathetic, Eichime Bara. Alright, Rena. Let's do this in one go. Ready? And? Whoa! We did it! We did it, Keiji-kun! Yay! The right time to give three cheers. That moment of two days of work bearing fruit. He who was brought to Hinamizawa covered in filth to meet his end. Instead, we were able to welcome him back. You're pretty lucky, Colonel Sanders. Your new master is a, is a pretty decent person. Or so we've been led to believe. Oh, Colonel Sanders. He really is cute. It didn't matter that he was dirty, Rena nuzzled him cheerfully with her cheek. I was dead tired, but seeing Rena's happy face made it all worth it. I hope you carry back. It'd be bad if it gets dark. Yeah, right. I really want to thank you, Keiji-kun. I won't forget this. Think real hard about what you'll do to repay me, okay? <laughs> Whoa, I wonder what kind of repayment- Oh, come on! Rena, for fuck's sake! I wonder... For now, I just hold back my evil cackle. We were ready to take it into her house, but we couldn't go like this. We rolled the statue up in the tarp and lifted him. And so Jack and Jill went down the hill, carrying a human-sized bag and an unsheathed axe. Oh my god, alright. I pray that we wouldn't run into Tomatek, son. If he saw us here and took a picture, we'll need to get rid of him. LOL. Is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Is this like um, flashbacks coming back into our mind? Something struck me as odd about the words Tommy takes on, unable to grasp my sense of humor had le left behind. Okay. Awkward pause. Is this it? Is this chapter 4? Okay. We have received new tips. What kind of name is Rena? Just one tip? Okay. Oh, but nothing new. Alright, guys, that was chapter 4. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And, uh, yeah, th things are. Things are starting to get pretty interesting. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But, uh, yeah, this was another. Just. Like, pretty normal chapter, I'll have to say. We'll see. I'm curious to see how chapter 5 will go and how things will keep going from here. Because uh, things are going to have to start getting serious, I think, soon. So, we'll see. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.